Nala had to go get his ass. <laughs> Simba was like, bump this. I'm about to go fuck my life up. That's what I'm about to go do. I'm about to just go fuck my life up real quick. I'll be back. Nala had to go find his ass. Nala had to tell him, look, <laughs> I don't know what kind of sh- like shrooms you on or whatever, eating. What kind of um insects. See, this is what y'all don't get about the Disney Channel movies, okay? And excuse me, Disney, I'm really, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't put your name in this. I'm not exactly sure. Those movies, they look like kid films, but it's for every age group. There's so many metaphors in in the film. Like, take The Lion King, for example, right? Simba and Nala, right? You know, when Simba goes off to, like, mess his life up or whatever, he runs into, like, Timon and Pumbaa, right? They open him up to this new world, right? What do you think the insects that he's eating in this magical jungle symbolize? Do you guys realize, like, when he runs away, everything, like, starts glistening and, like, turns this blue, hazy, smoky color? Those are drugs. <laughs> the insects that he's eating are, are, are symbolic of drugs. And some drugs are okay, some are not, right? But it's all about moderation. Like I said previously, I'm not here to take anything from you guys or tell you guys to do anything um, differently. I'm here to add to your life in hopes that the things that you add to your life will outweigh the negative and soon, eventually, you'll make the decision to have the negative things kind of fizzle away, right? But Simba left, right? And Nala was like, bruh, what are you doing? Like, you're not about to just leave. So she was like, you know, she said that to herself. She didn't say anything to him, right? So she let him go. So, you know, sometimes people just got to, like, figure figure stuff out, you know, be reckless, right? But after a while, the world Simba left, the world that Simba was responsible for started to crumble because... They needed him, essentially. He was chosen. He was selected. There's not a lot of people that are selected to lead. There are very few people that have what it takes to be a leader inside of them. Very, very, very few. The reason why society breaks down our leaders is is that's the test. Take Harry Potter, for example. Like, when he did the Tri-Wizard Tournament. Like, they broke him. They broke him. They need, like, we need to know if you're strong enough to lead. You've been selected to lead. Now you need to prove yourself. And, like, unfortunately, you don't have a choice. I was chosen. I was chosen to be a leader. I didn't even know what was going on. I had no clue what was going on. I had zero clue what was going on. I didn't know why I was being tested like and it was because I had been chosen no one told me I'd been chosen no one told me I had no clue I had no clue now some of you guys in this audience will be chosen it'll be very few only one percent of the population are born leaders and I do believe you're born a leader it's not something that you can kind of create within yourself you have it in you or you don't There's people that try to lead that are not born leaders and they get pretty far, but there's a, there's a ceiling there. True leaders are born and they're selected and there's nothing you can do about it. I was selected to be a leader and I was put through the scariest, most dangerous test of my life. I've like thought about suicide more than I can count in the double digits, honestly. Because I didn't know what was going on. No one told me that, that that's what the process was to lead. No one told me. No one, no one told me. No one said, hey, we're going to try to kill you a couple times to see how you uh, get out of it or see how you survive, right? No one told me that that, that was the test to lead. I had no clue what was going on. You want to know why no one told me? Because there's very few people who are selected to lead. Nobody, no one else around me knew what was going on. No one believed me. People thought I was crazy, right? People thought I was seeing things, hearing things. Now, we all have ways to, like, talk to the universe and talk to God, but some things are um, a little bit more calculated for leaders. 
Now I have a friend right now that's in training to be a leader and he has no clue what's going on. Zero. Zero. He has no clue. And I was chosen by God to mentor him through this. The struggle that I have with this situation is that he's with it, but he wants information he's not ready for. And I went through that same phase too. I'm like, why? Like, tell me this, tell me this. Okay, well then, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? And I like was in, when I was in his situation, I had a um, mentor as well. And like, unfortunately, my mentor wasn't in the flesh. I had a, I had a mentor that I was, uh, that I would speak to daily, but we weren't interacting in the flesh just because of like where we were location. Um, fortunately for him, I'm right here, but I remember I was constantly wanting to know what was going to happen next. Right. And the truth is your mentor doesn't know. The truth is, is like part of the test is not knowing part of the test of being a leader is, is not knowing what's going to happen next and to just always be prepared Part of what made me hesitant or like suicidal in thought, I never actually attempted to commit suicide ever. I think it's one of the most selfish things that you could do, honestly. Um, But I did think about it frequently. Um, I don't have those thoughts anymore, but I can tell you that the trigger for that was just not knowing what was going to come next. Isn't that so crazy? The way our, 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 our society has designed life for the common folk is that we rest on always knowing what's going to happen next, right? We always beckon on, like, what's going to happen next. But part of the beauty of being a leader is knowing that you're strong enough to face your fears and face your challenges even when you don't know what's coming. But isn't that war? That's what war is, right? Now, Nala, mind you, we we all know how women are in the animal kingdom, right? Usually the female is said to be much more ferocious, right? The female is the hunter and the gatherer. The only species... Think about this. The only species out there where men are required to hunt and gather is the human species. All other forms in all other forms of nature, the mount, the mouse, I don't know, the beluga whale, <laughs> um, the lion, birds, in all of those other groups. The woman is the one that goes out and hunts. She's the one that makes all the decision, all the decisions. She protects her husband. She protects his neck, right? Think about the lion. If a lion is being threatened, the lioness will come on under the male's neck and play like she's scared, right? She'll crawl up under him. And he'll stand over her like this, like he's protecting her. That's the illusion, right? So she crouches under his neck like this, right? Why? Because the neck is the most vulnerable place, right? In any species. You cut off the head, then then you're you're gone, right? Any other place, it could essentially, it's a higher chance of just being wounded, right? Not necessarily death. But if you strike someone in their neck, that's almost a guaranteed kill, right? So the lioness will sneak under the male, right? And protect his neck because she's faster and she's quicker, right? So if he's being threatened and someone comes to attack him, she has his neck. She's protecting it and she's striking quickly. The female is meant to play like a damsel in distress, but she's the warrior. So Nala was like, yo, where the hell is Simba at, yo? Like, for real, like, he need to come back. The man is the front, all right? The woman is the brains. The female is the brains of the entire operation, I promise you. It has always been that way. So Nala was like, yo, mom, auntie, I don't know where he at, but I'm about to go get him, I'll be back. 
So Nala left by herself. Do you understand that? When Simba left, he had to make friends just to feel okay with his decision, right? Nala left and she was like, look, I'm about to go get my man real quick. I'm about to save this kingdom. She had to save the kingdom though. Do you understand? She saved the kingdom. Most people think Simba saved Pride Rock. Simba didn't save Pride Rock. Nala saved Pride Rock. She saved it. Single-handedly by herself, she saved Pride Rock. She went to go get Simba and was like, look, you bugging? I'm about to chill with you for a sec. You know, hang out over here. See what you've been up to. Meet your friends. You know, we can go, like, jump in the river, go swimming. You know, we can do, we can do all this. I'm going I'm to make friends with you. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to respect your decision. I'm going to look around. I'm going to enjoy this vacation, right? But, but after this, after this couple of weeks, this little bit of time, you and I are leaving. Right? But Nala had to make Simba fall in love with her, which he was already in love with her. He just didn't know it. So they fell in love, which was her leverage. You see how the female mind works? Men out there, find yourself a good, strong woman. This this version of masculinity that is popularized in the media is false and completely illogical. The woman runs the relationship, she protects you, she bears your seed, she keeps the home prepared, she cooks, right? In quotations, cooks, because we're talking about the animal kingdom, right? For the men listening out there that have this mochismo uh, aesthetic about them, that's great, it looks good, right? That's what you're supposed to do. But you need to get yourself a good woman that's smart. That can handle your ass because y'all is crazy for real. Nah, but seriously. Get you a good woman. And for all you ladies out there that think a man's going to take care of you, that's not his job. The job of a male is to make you feel good and make you feel safe and have you actually be safe. And to provide for you. To give you everything that you need so that you can continue to protect and serve, right? That's the male's job. Oftentimes we get conflicted. We, we think those roles are twisted. And that's, that's why most relationships don't work out. Like the male and the female, they have their roles mixed up. Who grocery shops in your household? Those of you who have a heterosexual two-parent household, who does the grocery shopping? Okay, right? When a man goes to the grocery store, he shops for taste and quantity. When a woman goes to the grocery store, she shops for nutrients and quality. Like, we're not saying that men are not capable and women are not capable of of trading roles. You fully are. But some roles are better for the male and some roles are better for the female. We're not saying that you're, you're incapable of doing so. But you don't want to waste energy when you should be maximizing your quality of life. Nala saved Pride Rock. She had to go get her man and be like, all right, I'm about to kick it with you real quick. But we're leaving together. Do you understand? You're not staying here. I'm going to meet your friends. I'm going to kick it with you for a little bit. And then we're leaving. Do you understand? We're leaving. You're not staying here. This is not where you belong. Y'all know the story of Aladdin, right? And the diamond in the rough. Aladdin was the diamond in the rough. Most people that are born leaders or selected to be leaders are rebels in society. They don't fit in. They have no clue where they belong and they often feel lost until they're found. 
because they're supposed to lead. They have their hands in everything. They may know everybody. They speak multiple languages or can get by in multiple community or different type of communities, even communities that completely disagree with one another. They're that mend, that bond, right? The thing that brings everything together, together creates peace. Most leaders, if you have somebody in your community that everyone knows that may not necessarily fit in and it appears like they have all these friends but they really truly don't, those are the people that are selected to lead. They just don't know it yet. They haven't been taught that that's their role. I had no clue I was a leader. No one told me. I had no clue. I just thought I was just good at being me. And I thought everybody else was <laughs> was like a little off. But I was a, I was born to lead. And that's what I'm doing today. And I'm in a position now to bring up the next generation of leaders and that's what I'm here to do. I appreciate you guys' time. I appreciate you guys listening to me. And I'll talk to you guys soon.